She ran along mucky tracks with grazed knees and knotted hair, scratching hands on branches and refusing to care that her dress was torn. That's what the other girls wore, but she was more content at war with birds, insects, neighbours, at the top of a tree unseen where she could be she and see the world for what it really was. Queen of the trees and let roam with freedom in the jungle of imagination, where who cares about dresses and Barbies when the world is full of monsters and monkeys? Five years old, inhaling cigarette smoke from the queen of stories, her grandmother. But call her granny and she would give you a serious look with fierce eyes and reply, Madeline. Madeline is my name and I would be ashamed to be called Granny because you were born with a name for a reason. Your name is important. I am me, Madeline. And she'd smile with glee and light another cigarette and laughed through stories too young for the little girl's ears. But the girl would sit wide-eyed for hours and hours in awe and full of grawl for these manaw who would shape her into the woman she would become but didn't quite know it yet. A mother and grandmother, allowing her to be heard, to be counted, to laugh at jokes she didn't yet understand, to learn that sometimes it's not all grand and that women can be broken, but come back strong. Mother, daughter, grandmother, sipping tea at old tables, not understanding at the time the beauty of those moments, the frailty the inner fire and sensitivity instilled in the little girl who ate chocolate biscuits and let stories of women seep into ears and now, years later, sit as memories cherished and which she knows shaped her. And the echoes of stories will linger in chambers for years and may be imparted on ears of other little girls who will watch in wonder. But time passes and gone are the days of the reckless little girl in trees who buries pink dresses and thick earth behind the shed because she's ahead of the game and won't have the shame of being called a girly girl with brushed hair. The little girl becomes a teenager, full of ferocity and feelings, and finds a pack of other creatures, sisters, working their way through this jungle, this tunnel of confusion, a world of crumbling anxiety and expectation of beauty, and doubts that maybe we're not good enough, not pretty, smart, original, skinny enough. An outside eye grows and throws the girl into wondering what others think. How men perceive her, how her thighs are too thick, how maybe she shouldn't say things that might offend, shake or rattle. Better to keep silent, dream within reason, think about ambition and don't be unrealistic. But the woman is surrounded by a pack of Giselles of sisters, companions, and a mother braver than any other. And she knows that the world is changing, that times are turning and waves are crashing down on what was, what was expected, and this is the time to be she. The little girl sits in a tree and watches down on 2018. Grazed knees and scratched hands, knotted hair and not a care what anybody else thinks. She watches in awe of all the manaw in Ireland who speak out and are brave, who get on planes, who are bold and don't take no for an answer, who speak truths that need to be awoken, who are kind and push scared little girls to be brave and outspoken, who live in freedom with a fire in their bellies. The little girl watches in awe of all these manaw and smiles and hopes that one day she will be one of them. <laughs>